Hey guys, my name's Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up data loss prevention policies in Microsoft 365. So if you guys are familiar with data loss prevention in Microsoft 365, you know from a licensing perspective that it only comes with specific plans. So traditionally, it's only been a part of the enterprise level SKUs and above. And now though, it is included with Microsoft 365 Business Premium. That is $20 a user a month as well too. So that is what I consider to be the best package that this comes part of. In this video though, I'm going to show you how to set up some policies, give you some recommended policies, and then show you the end user experience as well. So diving into it here, I do have the 365 Security and Compliance Center open here. This is the legacy dashboard. They're still transitioning to the new home for Microsoft Security and Compliance. You can set up the policy here as well too. But until they fully move it to that side of things, I'm going to remain in this portal because you have a lot more management functionality. And oftentimes they redirect you from that center into here anyway. So in this portal under data loss prevention, you can just click on policies here. I've already set up some policies just for demo purposes to show you the end user experience. But the big thing here when you actually create a policy, there's none set by default. But if you come in here, you'll have the ability, as you can see here, to search for some policy templates that predefine certain information that it's going to look for in SharePoint, OneDrive, Teams, and also Exchange Online to apply these policies and apply the controls that you define within the policy itself. So oftentimes, you're going to be working with customers that have to follow under certain compliance regulations like HIPAA and FINRA. So this is a good way as an MVP approach to securing their environment more from the compliance side of things. So when you look at this in the sense of templates, you have a lot of predefined ones here, a lot of ones for HIPAA here that you see as well, where they already include PII and medical terms to detect within these environments or these locations that you will define. So when I'm looking to set up these policies, generally I'm gonna set up a policy that detects PII or medical identifiers if I have a HIPAA client. But if I'm dealing with a client that doesn't fall under compliance regulations, I still want to detect for credit card information in a social security card, bank account information, and ABA routing number. So with that one, you can just select US financial data, or you could do custom and just select the custom uh, templates that you want to use or custom predefined information, sensitive information types is really what it's called. So this is really good when you get into it here. Privacy Act as well too. If you're in California, this will become more relevant with CCPA coming into play as well too. So I'd recommend that you obviously evaluate the client to see if there are any type of compliance that they need to fall under. And again, if they're not, at least start protecting credit card information, social security numbers, things like that. The vertical of the customer is obviously going to be a big part of this but they do allow you a lot of flexibility in the custom controls that you're going to apply, which you'll see here in a second. So you can name this whatever you like here. They give it a predefined name, but you could be scoping this to certain environments or certain groups, which would then define the name in my opinion. Here you can choose to apply it to all specific locations, Exchange Teams, Email, OneDrive, and SharePoint, um, or you could choose the locations and get more granular in the sense of certain OneDrive accounts or certain Teams chat or channel messages They've made it as granular as possible. There's obviously a lot of complexity when you go that route. So for most tenants, I like to keep it on the high level, but obviously you can have some clients, especially under compliance regulations, that need more granular controls applied. This section though, while I do like the holistic high level approach, I do like to choose the advanced settings here for the controls that I'm going to apply. So here's where you define the rules that you're going to set in the tenant. You can customize this and edit the pro, the rules here. For the low volume, it's one to nine, and then nine and above is high volume, but the priority is zero. So it's gonna to try to detect for this first if it contains that. But if it contains an Excel file, for instance, with you know over 10, over nine sensitive information types of this kind, of a credit card number, for instance, it's gonna take your high level policy. So with this here, you know, we already have that here. You can most likely say it's going to be people without outside your organization. I typically like to set up a policy to restrict people sharing this kind of information inside the organization within Teams itself. So I usually create a separate policy to say, hey, let's not share any type of credit card information, bank account information, 
uh, or anything like that in Teams chats or channel messages as well too. So that's that's a best practice that I would I would typically recommend using. But here you can define people outside your organization. You could add more conditions if you really wanted to, but this is you know as granular as I'm going to get for the high level overview. There's obviously lots of controls and lots of granularity you can see here that you can define depending on the environment or depending on the workflows of the client. So it's best to sit down with them if you don't already know and get an idea of who they interact with, what types of sensitive information that they store and share both internally and externally and uniquely identify what they say is information that they wouldn't want shared outside the organization or that they would want additional security controls on. Ultimately, you're still the advisor for the client in recommending the policies and saying these are the ones that we would recommend based off of what you guys do. But obviously talking with them about that is going to avoid disruption or prevent them from opening up a ton of help desk tickets if you apply too many controls here and get too restrictive. So what we'll want to do here is restrict access or encrypt the content. So what I recommend here, it's kind of black and white in the sense that I want to ask the client, hey, do you want to share or are you sharing credit card information, social security card, bank account information with your clients externally. And if they say yes, then we may just want to apply encryption to these email messages and you're already getting um, you know, some protection there by encrypting the message. Otherwise, it's just going out unencrypted unless you have other rules in place like mail plug rules. Otherwise here, you want to go ahead and block people from sharing and restrict access to shared content. And mostly I like to do this with everyone and you will have the access still guaranteed to the people inside the company. But let's think of, you know, attaching a, a Excel file with a bunch of credit card information to um, an email address that's external to the organization, or maybe they don't know it contains all of that. This can automatically detect that and block them, which I'll share with you here as well, too, as far as the end user demo. And this is what I would do across the board for, you know, any information that contains that sensitive info type, like the social security numbers, or if you're in HIPAA, for instance, you know, find a good way to do this with the PII medical terms as well. With user notifications, I'd like to keep this on so that when it blocks them from sending that, it, it does notify them and it tells them why that the email was blocked um, or if they try to share a, you know, a SharePoint document with somebody or one of their OneDrive documents that contains that sensitive info, it's good to notify them and also the owners as well too. I like to keep these settings customized, but I usually like to customize the policy tip to say something like, this is sensitive. Something generic, just like that, just so they understand what's going on. I'll get that message there. You can choose to do policy tip um, and override, let them override the message. You can require a business justification. I'd recommend that if they are doing that. This comes into play two times, or two use cases, I would say. One of which is it's false positive, and it's trying to detect something that maybe, you know, isn't a social security number, but they're just trying to send it out, and they can just say, hey, you know, you can override this if it's a, if it's a false positive in that case. Or in some cases, maybe they are able to, or they are interacting with clients in a way of which they share certain credit card information or social security information over email. That is then a business justification of which they can audit and uh, write in for you as an audit trail. And you can collect that, but at least get them thinking of, hey, should I actually be sending this to this person? If so, yes, then let me write in my message of why it's going to the correct customer. They need this information for XYZ policy or procedure. And then all that's documented. So if there is a breach, you can realize, you know, who made that mistake and you have a complete audit trail for also, you know, HIPAA clients in the case that you may get audited as well too. For incident reports, um, you can choose the sensitivity level, and these are admin level reports if you want to run reports later on on low, medium, or high. So depending on what you know the organization is doing, you can choose this. High reports usually notify the admin as well too. You can choose to email them and add multiple participants. This may be something where you just want to put in your help desk here that goes into your ticketing system for PSA purposes. That's a really good recommendation, uh, just so you can see if there's a high level match and address it if it is something where you can be more proactive. 
uh, with somebody getting blocked for these kinds of things or just have a, a, you know, an additional audit trail because I know you guys do a lot of reporting out of the PSA tool, not 365 in per se. Um, so you can choose to stop processing all of the BOP rules. You have your priorities. This one's at zero or whatever priority you set here. They'll go in sequential order depending on what you do. And again, I already set these up, but this is the order. So it's saying if you know you matches these terms on the email or SharePoint document or whatnot, and it's, they're trying to send it externally, it'll stop right here and it won't process any of these other policies that we've set up. So that's all that's saying. So so order does matter in in a certain level case, you know. So you have to keep that in mind. But that's the the high level of the policies that you can create. So I just wanted to show that. Now I wanted to show you the actual end user experience. So I'm gonna pop into this actual end user tenant or machine here and pop into email and outlook and i'm just going to draft a new email here and i'm going to send it to somebody external to my domain my domain is t-minus.com and i'm sending the trading nest to gmail and i'm going to just say test credit card go ahead and insert uh, a file for my OneDrive here and just so you guys can see I have it with credit card information the security code and expiration and name so it definitely contains some sensitive information there and it's it's gonna go externally here so I can click on send and it takes a couple seconds to process that because it's obviously scanning the document but we'll see it get rejected here in just a second all right, so here we see that we get the message back, and this is our messaging here, which basically is non-deliverable, and it says that you know it didn't meet these requirements. It was sent outside your organization, and it contains this credit card information. So this is a really good way to start preventing users, you know, from accidental loss. In some cases, they don't know that there's information outside there. They may be accidentally adding recipients that they don't mean to, and there's also you know malicious loss, things like that. It could also happen. But accidental loss is definitely a heavy consideration here in just getting people to start using best practices within the organization. Beyond attachments, though, it's also taking the freeform text in the email message as well, too. So if I do another one here, I'll just do social security number test. I'm just going to paste in a fake social security number here and just simply send that off again externally. <laughs> And we see here that it was also denied, and this time it's reflecting the social security number. So it's a pretty good thing to set up. It's a very lightweight policy. You can definitely set it up just to test first without actually turning it on just as an audit trail. And people will start to get policy tips, and you can use the reporting within the tenant itself to start to gather information. So these are the policy matches that you can see here and you can see if they they are fired off this is about a 24-hour delay by the way just so you know uh, when looking at this and here you can click on the view details table and you can see when it detects a certain information and you can start to gather an inventory of all this content within the tenant itself that has this information that it's detecting as well so when it matches the policy for this particular information, it's starting to look through OneDrive and SharePoint to tag all this information. I would go ahead and create a schedule here as well too and send it either to an admin or again to your ticketing system so that you can get a report of this and see any deltas, um, anything that's being reported that you may need to be identified about. Again, if it's triggering a policy that's in a severity of high, might be your you know, filter that you're looking for to browse on a monthly basis or every couple of weeks or something like that, just as a more proactive approach again. Lastly here, if we go back into this tenant, um, you can do the same thing within Teams as well. So again, I like to take a policy to say, hey, I don't want you sending any type of credit card information, bank account, social security numbers, anything over Teams chat. Kind of gets hairy when you're thinking about them sending all this information over this channel. Um, while it is encrypted at rest, all the data in Microsoft here on Teams, 
it is something where if you're starting to share this th these things in Teams channels and quickly get of hand for the people who can actually access this data. So this is just an example of an external guest that I'm collaborating with that I say, hey, you know, you can't send credit card information. So it blocks this and it gives you a what can I do? And it tells you the, the information here. It's, it's protected by a policy. Here's what you can do. And you can report it as the admin or to the admin within the company. And again, you can create that so that it could notify your ticketing system via PSA. So these are all powerful things that you can set up that are pretty lightweight, but again, you definitely want to do some testing first just to make sure you understand the full impacts this will have across the organization and then roll this out again in a pilot phase to some test users, get the feedback and then move out to the rest of the organization. But these are definitely quick hits that you can do that don't require a lot of admin work because of how easy it is to set up the policy. But it is something I would start to turn on in every tenant as well too, especially in this remote workforce. That's everything I wanted to show you guys. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, please like or subscribe if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.